Welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over the basic setup of the Amcrest IP2M 863EW AI outdoor pan tilt zoom IP camera. So, this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful, I'll put a link to this in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So, I've done some previous videos. I did an unboxing video and I did one setting up the app. And I'll put a link in the description of my Amcrest playlist where you can find those videos. And if I make any other videos, I'll also post those in the playlist. So I'm on a Mac right now, but you can also do this on a Windows PC. I have the camera installed and hooked up to my network. I have DHCP on my network, so it will have given it an IP address, and we need to find out what that IP address is. So you need to go online and find an application called Amcrest IP Config. If you search for that, you should be able to find it. You can open that up, and that will list off all of your cameras. So I have quite a few on here. So if you're not seeing all of them, where it says IPv4, sometimes I don't think that one really matters, but I set that to all, the next one to all, and then you can hit refresh, and hopefully everything comes up here. So I want this camera here, it's IP2M-863E-AI, and you can see there's an IPv4 and a V6 address, so I want the 4 one. I don't think you can copy that address, so I'll just remember it, it's 192.168.7.238. So I want to enter that into a web browser. So in my testing of this camera, I found that Chrome works best. So I typed that IP address into my address bar and we're at the login page. So if you've never logged in, your username and password is admin and then admin. Now I've already logged in, so I've set a password for this. So I'll type that in. When you log in the first time, it will ask you to change your password. So I record this at 720p. So my screen can get a little bit more crowded. If you have your resolution set to say 1080p, this will look a little bit better, but the 1080p works well for screen recording because it makes everything bigger. And actually I'll go to full screen here. So that'll give me just a little bit more room. So this takes you right into the live view. There are multiple streams on here. We have the main stream, substream one, and substream two. Now in the app, these are called main and extra. Here it's called substream. So main works well if you're on the same network, which I am. But if you're say at a hotel room with not great internet and you're accessing this over a VPN, you may want to switch to one of the substreams, which could take less bandwidth. On the top here, we have live, which we're looking at. We also have AI live. Now AI live requires a plugin that only works on Internet Explorer. So I don't know if that'll ever be updated to work on other browsers. So if I click on it, it's not going to show me much here. Next we have playback. So I have installed an SD card in here. So it's recording to that SD card. It's a 128 gigabyte card. And I can go through the calendar here and I can view the recordings. And then there's cloud storage. So if you've set up Amcrest cloud storage, you can access that there. So I'll go back to live view. Let's see what some of the main things we can look at here is the control. So I can pan to the right. I'm going to pan down a little bit. So this takes some getting used to. You might overshoot things a little bit. So practice with it and you'll get better at it. So I'm going to go down to the concrete. I can pan, so I was tilting, now I'm panning. And I can zoom down here below. So I'll hold that down, that'll zoom me in. So we're zoomed into the concrete. It doesn't quite seem focused, but they have us covered. Right below it, you have focus. So I can tap this. Focus is really nice if you're looking through a fence. If you have multiple objects that are near each other and it's focusing on the wrong one, you can manually adjust the focus here. I just saw an ant crawling, so I don't know if we can... Boy, that thing's fast, it's gone. There's a stick. And then iris, so that will make it brighter or darker. So a lot of times you can just use the auto settings. You don't have to mess with that. Then we have tour. That's an advanced function. I do have that set up. That'll go between different positions. So if I start that, that's going to go to the default position and then it will zoom in to the left. Normally there's a car here and there would be a license plate on that car and it can zoom in on that. I forget what I have this set up to, but I'm not going to go over how to set that up in this. I just wanted to let you know what that does. And actually I'm gonna stop it now. So that'll go between different positions. So I have it go to the left and then I have it go up in the tree and then it goes back to the default. So I'm not covering that in this video. I may make a future video on the advanced settings and I'll include it in that and that will be in my playlist. So also I want to say the face detection normally will not be here until you enable it. So on the bottom left here, it says PTZ. That just gives you your pan tilt zoom controls here on the right. So in the middle here we have position. So we can drag something on the screen and it will zoom into that point. So I'll zoom out. I'll scroll to the right. That's a little too far. So I'm going to zoom in on this knot here. So I will select it. I'm in the top part of the screen, a little bit left to center. I will select that 
and that will zoom in on that. Now it doesn't zoom in all the way. I can select it again and go even closer. And again, we can go closer. I think that's probably about as close as I can get. I can hit zoom here and see we're not zooming in anymore. So say I want to read this sign here on the right, I can select it. Oops, I got a little too far over. Let's try that again. So now we've zoomed on the sign. So you can see that is kind of blurry. So I can hit focus to focus on that. Going the wrong way. And this sign, if I measured correctly, is around 220 feet away. So if that's not exact, it's pretty close to that. And you can see how sharp that can be. And this is you know, perfect example here of when focus could come into play. We have this really large tree here on the right and left and it's focusing on that and we want to focus on what's behind it. So from here I can zoom up or pan up or tilt up. <laughs> the terminology doesn't matter if you know what you're doing, you just do it. So here we can see the bark on the tree. I'll go to the left, no I want to stay zoomed in. So I'll go to the left here. So I let go, you can see it still kind of moves a little bit. So the more you use it, the more you'll get used to it. So here's my oak tree. No, that's the neighbor's oak tree. This, I think, is my oak tree. So I will go up the tree a little more until it stops, and that will be the highest it can go up. Okay. So I can't go up any further on this, so now I'll zoom out so you can see how far out we are zoomed. Now I'll zoom back in. There we go. So if I want to go to the first position, I actually have my little preset made here for the tour. So I'll hit start and that will take me back to my first position here. And then I'll hit stop. So those are the controls for viewing it. Let's go to playback real quick. So I may have to skip over some of these because I don't know if there's anything private on here, but I can go to file list. That's my favorite way to do it. I'll click on the end button. And I'll double tap on this and it should play the video. Now the controls are a little bit different on IE. There's some controls, I think on the bottom. So we saw a car drive by there. And then you can hit this download button that will download to your desktop. So let's go into setup and I'm not going to go over all the setup, but I want to go over the video setup here and mostly just this camera stuff, I think. But there's a couple things here we can go over. We have configuration under camera and here you have picture settings exposure. I'm not going to go over all these. Uh, day and night, something you may be interested in. Focus and zoom. So you can turn digital zoom on here. I have it turned off. The illuminator. So you can turn the infrared off here. There's a defog feature too. I imagine maybe in the winter time, if it gets foggy, you can turn that on. But the biggest thing I probably want to go over is the video. So here you have your mainstream and your substream, and this would be extra on the app. Now you don't see substream one and two here with mainstream and substream. That's under substream. So if you go to substream, there's this drop down and you can choose one or two. So you switch between that to change the settings on the two substreams. So under video, we have the encode mode and we have H.264, 264B, 264H, and then we have 265, which is HEVC. So 265 is the newer protocol. If you want higher quality with lower bandwidth, that could be the one to use. I may switch to that later, but I do okay with 264. We have Smart Kodak, that's supposed to help compress the video better. I have it turned off, and these are mostly the default settings here. I don't think I've changed these at all. At the bottom here, you can hit reset defaults. So next we have resolution, we have 1920 by 1080, we have 1280 by 960, 1280 by 720. So there's not a lot of resolutions to choose from here but there's not really many they wouldn't want to add here if you want really low bandwidth you can go down to 640 by 480 and then you have this is essentially 720p and this is 720p that's a little bit taller high resolution cameras are going to have more options than this but since this has such a good zoom on it you may not need such a high resolution camera compared to a regular security camera. Frame rate, we have 30 frames per second. That will go up to 60. Bit rate is CBR or VBR. So that's constant bit rate or variable bit rate. And then we have the bit rate here you can change. So it's at 496. I 
I think I may have changed that to 81.92, so I'll change that back up to that. I like higher bit rates on my network because it can easily handle it. And we have the watermark settings. And then on the substream, it's similar to the mainstream, except you're going to have different codecs here. It adds in MJPEG. So that's very compatible with things, but it takes more bandwidth. And I think substream 1 and 2 have the same. Okay, substream 2 does not have MJPEG there. And then the resolution on it is 640 by 480. So you probably wouldn't change your mainstream to 640 by 480. You'd probably just use the substream. And then the frame rate's going to be 30, CBR, VBR, and you can change the bit rate here. And the snapshot settings, you can change the image size, quality, and the interval. So overlay is for adding text to different things. So there's a privacy mask, so you can block things out. You can draw on the screen. You have channel title. So this is currently IP PTZ camera. You can turn the time on and off. You can add the day of week. You can add in all sorts of information here the coordinates, the temperature. So the temperature is the internal temperature of the camera. So if you have a lot of these cameras around, you're going to monitor your surroundings with the camera, but you can throw the temperature on the screen so you can monitor the camera itself. And you can have coordinates at zoom. So that will put the coordinates, uh, essentially the angle the camera is at and the zoom level on the screen. You can set north to enable. So that doesn't necessarily have to be north, but you would want to point the camera in the direction you want to call north. And when you enable it, you'll have a little indicator on the screen that will show you which way it's pointing. So actually I will turn that on. I'll turn zoom on, coordinates, temperature. This might get a little ugly. Then you can do text overlay also. And you can change the font, logo overlay, custom overlay. Abnormal gives you a flag if something's abnormal. Structured, I forget what that is. Structured statistics and face statistics. You can turn those on too. I have face statistics turned on. I'll turn that off. That'll look a little better for us. Oops. And path is where you can save. So audio is if you have audio set up on this. So this doesn't come with a microphone or speaker, but it has wiring, so you can add those yourself. And on the left here, you have network. Those are all the network settings, pan, tilt, zoom. So this is where I set up the presets. So I'm not covering this here, but you can play around with those. And we have event. This is for the video detection, smart detection, face detection, the AI features. Those are going to be under here. Storage. You have schedule. This is when it's going to store for what kind of thing. So if you have motion detection, you can tell it when you're going to store things. And we have the destination. I have an SD card in there. So it is writing to the SD card. And you have record control. This tells it to overwrite when the disk is full. Like I say, I'm doing quick overview here. And then system has different things like setting up users. You can do firmware upgrade. You can set the time and date on there. And then we have information has the version, who's online, things like that. Let's pop back over to live here. And I think we're gonna see things on the screen if I set this up right, yeah. So we can see the temperature here is 62 degrees C. So that's the internal temperature of the camera. We have this arrow pointing up because we said that's north. That is actually south where I live. But And then we have the PTZ settings here. So you can see when I rotate a little bit, I skipped a little bit there, but you could see these numbers changed and you can see this arrow's pointing a different direction. And I can zoom in here too. And you can see the zoom is going to change. I think that goes up to 25. Yeah, which makes sense. It's a 25x zoom. So I don't think I want those on my screen. I'll probably take those off later, but if that's something you want, you can add those. So I just wanted to go over a basic overview of using the web application. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.